Hello, this is Grandpa Ron from On the Road with Ron, here to talk about surge protectors or EMS devices. Um, these are the things that you may or may not need in your RV to protect your AC appliances. Um, so anyway, we're going to go over five reasons that you should get one and five reasons that uh, maybe you don't really need one. Anyway, the first reason to get an EMS system is to protect against lightning strikes and uh, high voltage surges coming through your AC uh, power line uh, and damaging your AC appliances. Well, first reason not that you don't need one is, what's the chances of anything happening? Uh, I've been RVing for nine years now, never had a uh, surge protector of any kind, uh, never have any issues, so what's the chances of uh, lightning striking you? Actually, if it strikes you, who cares, right? Power pedestals can be miswired. Uh, if you go to a campground, maybe an old campground, uh, who knows who has been working on those things and rewiring those pedestals. Uh, could be the guy's brother-in-law. Maybe he knows how to do it, maybe he doesn't. But the EMS system will protect you and make sure that you only have good power before it sends that power onto your appliances. Yeah, I guess there's always a chance that uh, power pedestals are miswired, but uh, I don't know. I see everybody else camping there with no problem, so if it's good for them, it uh, should be good for me. Besides, they have inspectors and inspect all that stuff before uh, before these guys can start opening for business anyway, so I don't, I don't see the need for it. Number three, uh, brownout protection. Uh, brownouts are a low voltage condition, you know, maybe 100 volts or less, uh, and sometimes you get that from the power companies when there's a transformer failure or something like that. Uh, but anyway, they can uh, cause your AC motors to overheat and have drastically shortened life. Uh, might even burn up the unit. So the EMS will cut off the voltage, shut off your air conditioner whenever there's a dangerous condition like that that may cause it to go up in smoke. Yeah, brownouts, brownouts. Uh, brownout doesn't happen that much. Uh, yeah, it can be happen from a transformer getting hit, but uh, you can tell right away your lights flicker and other kind of stuff. So just turn off your air conditioner or, uh, or you can unplug it and just wait it out. So uh, anyway, I don't, you don't need it for that. Reason number four is these modern EMS systems. They're very safe and reliable. You don't have to worry about it. You just uh, have that in your system, either the portable or the hardwired version, and um, you can just set it and forget it. Safe and reliable, huh? Well, there's nothing more reliable than not having one in the first place. So, I don't know. I don't think I need one. Fifth reason for getting an EMS system is they are cheap insurance against expensive AC appliance repairs. Uh, you all know going to an RV repair station, you have to leave your rig there for a long time. Who knows how much it's gonna cost? Do they get it right the first time? Uh, who wants to have a air conditioner ripped out of your roof and somebody put it back in again, a new one in? Or, you know, the microwave? So, it's better to be safe than sorry, so get your EMS. And the uh, fifth reason for not getting one is, um, I don't know, I don't buy this cheap insurance. Uh, these things are expensive. Uh, the hardwired versions cost uh, was about $230, plus you have to put it in. And those little portable ones, uh, they're like about $270 for the, for the latest EMS unit. Uh, that's a lot of money, just, uh, um, I don't know. I guess I can just, uh, unplug the cord when there's a problem and plug it back in when it's safe to go. So anyway, that's why I have circuit breakers and fuses for the trip when there's an electrical problem. So who needs it? Uh, you heard it. I want to thank my good friends Roger and Dodger for explaining the pros and cons of these EMS systems. Uh, however, if you are thinking that you might want to install one, I just finished mine and I'll show you how I did it. It wasn't too hard to install, but I chose to put it in a place that was really hard to reach, so there's a lot of bending and stretching involved, which you know I'm not a big fan of right now. But anyway, um, this is what I did, and so far it's working fine. Of course, the first thing you want to make sure is you're not uh, plugged into power.
okay, um, this is the point where I wonder whether I should have bought this or not. Uh, I gotta figure out where to put everything. So I wanted to put the remote up here in my one place, but uh, dang, where am I gonna put it? Um, yeah, I don't know. It doesn't go perfect. And the unit itself, it's like, holy cow, this is really jammed in here. So you can see it's pretty big. Um, so anyway, but you know, just have to figure that out. And move on and just uh, get her done. This is the way the box is gonna go. I think I can get this down in here just past there, as long as the water is running underneath it. I managed to fit the uh, box down here around these wires and uh, push the water lines uh, right over here, move those out of the way. So uh, this is the uh, main wire from my transfer box and the 30 amp line. So I'm just gonna cut it right about in the middle here. Got the uh, cable cut off here. That's the uh, lead here. I got the uh, wires all cut and stripped. I had to run those into the connections, uh, but I do need to put a uh, ground lug um, crimp on this, but uh, I'm gonna put it through there first. I got the connector crimped on and these wires hooked into the terminal. Okay, I think that'll be enough. Got all the three, six wires connected. Um, turns out it was quite a job getting in there in those uh, tight spaces to get everything tightened up. Anyway, time to mount the remote and uh, see if she works. like 11 amps from that uh, from the air conditioner here. Box is installed. Uh, I got the remote hooked up there. The wires going down, tied together, and uh, plugged in right there. give you a little uh, card here but uh, I can't see it that far away and be able to read it so uh, I made a larger one and just stuck it on there. In conclusion uh, most people are probably going to be like Roger and uh, really find it very helpful give you a little extra peace of mind on the road having an EMS system to protect your electrical systems. Um, however, if you do do a lot of boondocking and don't plug into campgrounds very often, that's pretty much what I did before, uh, then, you know, maybe you really don't need one. It's just another thing to carry around and potentially, you know, get lost or stolen or whatever. So there's pluses and minuses on both sides, of course. But uh, anyway, my conclusion is that most people will want one and there's a few that uh, don't need it. We're all done. Um, hope this video was entertaining and educational. Uh, and if you like it, hit the like button. Subscribe if you want to see more of these or uh, even share it if uh, somebody else might want to see it. So anyway, this is uh, Grandpa Ron signing off and I'll see you on the road.